I have just done a couple of little tests for my own information. Um, I bought, and I think the cheapest prices for this stuff, um, it's uh, plaid folk art um, glitterific, I think that's what it's called, and it's really quite amazing. Um, I saw this uh, gal using it and then she put UV resin over it. So, uh, on the bottle it says it's combustible. Um, I was a little afraid about that, but I wanted to know if I could apply this product and then bake it. And, yes, you can. Okay, what happened is, this, uh, I did these, this side first on unbaked clay. So, I painted it, but I have also found that I think you get you get uh, a better result if you use a toothpick and spread it on that way by rolling the toothpick. Plus, you don't waste uh, too much of this glitter. Glitter. It's quite remarkable. So that was the first side I did, and then I baked it for I want to say 15 or 20 minutes, and nothing happened. I was sitting really close to the oven to make sure nothing happened during this process. So then I took it out and I thought, well, let me do the other side. Um, and I just uh, roll that on with a toothpick. So now if I want to UV resin these, I could UV resin these on both sides. And it's uh, really pretty. Um, that, that one, I believe, was a combo where I used more than one color. These are amazingly um, glittery. <laughs> yeah, this is the back side that I did after it was baked. This is the front side that I did on raw clay. Now, I will say it's embedded a little more into the clay on this side than this side. So it sits up <clears throat> more. Not that you can really tell, but I can just tell from running my fingers over it. So this is the one I did on the raw clay, and then baked it, and then when it came back out, I, I put it on. However, it could just be that when I used the toothpick to apply it, I got better coverage, you know, a lot more, a lot more on it than I did with a paintbrush. Anyway, um, so for those who are worried, uh, the key, I think, is to let the paint dry. Uh, not, I wouldn't put wet paint in the oven uh, on raw clay or on anything actually. So I wouldn't use it raw. But once the paint has dried, that's when I stuck these in the in the oven and had no problems with it whatsoever. So um, even though it says combustible, I suspect it's something in the base that uh, makes it less combustible or combust at a higher heat. I don't know which. Uh, but the base, while it's wet, might be a problem. I didn't want to test that. But I did, um, had no trouble putting them in the oven once the paint on the discs were dry. The other experiment I have is the UV resin. And um, I wanted to make some gemstones. Um, but I, I, I colored my UV resin. And how I colored it, uh, UV resin does not like water. So you can't use anything that's liquid. And I don't think alcohol inks would work either. But I scraped a little bit of my ink tense blocks. And frankly, I, I got more color than I really wanted. I wanted these to be lighter, but you can actually see through them through the light. See, they're, they are definitely transparent. So, yeah, so you can see my finger through it. And, and although I put quite a lot of color in, more than I really wanted. But to make these look like, say, rhinestones or gemstones, I have another experiment I'm going to do with these. What I'm going to do is, uh, uh, I noticed that when you put these on the gold foil, you know, the foil that kind of rips off 
not the thin flyaway sheet. It kind of looks more like a gem, it, that reflective quality. Uh, instead of seeing all the way through it, you'll see either a silver or a gold backing. I know that's what they do with rhinestones, so um, that's what I'm going to do next, is I have an adhesive product. Let's see if I can find it. It's over here. I know. This gigantic mess. Yeah, and I've used it before. It's uh, uh, Pabio Mixed Gen Relief. And it's a glue product, and I've used it on a number of things. Let me see. Most recently, yeah, I wanted to add, I made these earrings, and they were rather boring. So I wanted to add some uh, bright gold. So I applied this adhesive. It comes out in a, a very fine nozzle, as you can see. Uh, but the key is you must let it wait. You must wait until it is perfectly dry and then you put the gold foil I'll show you in just a second there's a piece of it that I used so you can see you just apply it becomes very very tacky so then you have a piece of this uh, foil you can see the trellis design where I was able to lift off the gold so that's what I'm going to do now with those um, I'm going to use a little bit of that adhesive. If I could figure out how to cut them small enough, I could just, you know, put it on the back when I um, use the, make these in the UV resin in the little molds, but that's just a pain. So these are clear now. Of course, they do have a little bit of, I didn't mix it up really well. If you mix up the color with the UV resin better than I did, you don't get that, those, uh, you know, see the, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. It's a bit of a graininess in there. I don't think I mind that. So I'm going to turn these over. They have the faceted fronts. That's the inside of the mold. And I put that little adhesive in there. Yeah, yeah you can see the grains. So I could have mixed it or taken I, the shavings from the ink tents and just, um, mashed them up finer, yeah, when I mix them with the UV resin, but it does get the color. Um, so now my next um, experiment is going to be adding the gold foil to the backs of these with that adhesive. And I think I'll have a better jewel, more of a jewel-like appearance. So for what it's worth, whatever um, you're trying to achieve, I will show you the mold that I used. Let's see. I ordered this set of molds, and as you can see, they're very tiny, and they're all, they all have uh, jewel uh, facets, I guess you'd call them, except maybe this one here. And there's a couple that do not, but you can see they're faceted to look like jewels. And the UV resin is really, really, really clear. I may make myself some more of these, but after I see how they look with the gold backing, I think they're going to look a lot more sparkly. So if I need a jewel for any of my projects, I can just make my own in whatever color I want, and I like having the ability to do that. So for what it's worth, these experiments might be useful to you. I haven't added the UV resin on these, and when you do, they are <laughs> unbelievably sparkly. I think they'll make some interesting earrings. I'll just drill holes in them after a while, and and uh, but I like having the color on both sides, the, the uh, glitter. All right, that's it for now. It was a bit of a long one. Okay, what I've done is I've uh, smeared the glue uh, on the backs of these three UV resin gems. And like I said, it was this product. And I couldn't get it even, <coughs> so I, I smeared it with my finger. And I think enough adhesive will be on there, even though it looks 
um, thin in some spots that the uh, I can get this foil when it's dry. Now I have to wait till that it's white now and it'll be perfectly clear when it's dry. And then I can use uh, this adhesive uh, to pull away uh, the gold. So that's that's what I've just done.